Hey guys, what's going on? It's Ben here, and today I'm going to be doing a video talking about the Detroit Pistons. Um, mainly, I'm going to be focusing on their team of the mid 2000s and largely why uh, this dynasty is ignored when people talk about NBA dynasties. I feel like uh, it's just largely one that I don't hear talked about when I hear various uh, media outlets or networks talking about the great NBA dynasties of all time. But in my opinion, it is a great NBA dynasty of all time. And because of that, I want to talk about it today. I want to share some info with you, uh, maybe inform you a little bit on why it is a great dynasty, even though you might not hear about it very much. And yeah, so I'm just going to get into that. So just a bit of background, the Detroit Pistons made the playoffs in uh, eight straight years here. Let's see. From 2001 to 2009, uh, that's yeah, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight straight years. Yep, uh, and they reached the conference finals in six straight seasons, uh, the second round one time and the first round one time. Uh, during this period, they got to the finals once. They or they won the NBA finals once. They got to the finals another time and lost. Uh, the four other times they lost in the conference finals. Uh, during this period of time, Ben Wallace won four Defensive Player of the Year awards. Rick Carlisle won a Coach of the Year. Chauncey Billups won a Finals MVP. Joe Dumars won a Executive of the Year award. Corliss Williamson won a Sixth Man of the Year award. So there was plenty of accolades going towards this team at the time. But I just feel like in uh, retrospect, looking at them historically, they were a good team, but they just somehow don't get talked about very much for some reason. And I think what the main reason for this might be was that the East was a bit weaker, so people thought that it was an easy conference to conquer and get far in. But I don't think that that is really Detroit's fault. I think that they should be more applauded rather than shrugged at for doing well and getting far in the playoffs. Because I don't think in any other time in NBA history... Uh, we've really done that where we say an accomplishment doesn't mean anything because of the time that the team was randomly placed into. Like the players that played on that team that, uh, or the teams that were during those eight years can't control when they played or when they came onto the team. So I think it's unfair that the NBA doesn't remember them as they should be remembered. Uh, you know, you hear about teams like... Uh, I'm trying to think of ones that get talked about a lot. Um, like the Miami Heat of the mid-2000s are a team that gets brought up a lot. Shaq and D-Wade, Shaq and D-Wade. That team, for, just for the record, really was only together for three years. They won one championship. One time they lost in the conference finals. And uh, another time they lost in the first round. So really, in just in my opinion, that team did nothing compared to what this Pistons team did. Um, other teams you hear about of the mid-2000s in the East are like the 2007 Cleveland Cavaliers team that they get a decent amount of press. It's negative press, but they do get talked about a lot because of how bad they were. Uh, that they, they did, in fact, beat these Pistons, actually. I'll talk about that in a little while, but I just think that somehow the Pistons are just forgotten because I've never... But, you know, the teams that I've heard of that have made six straight conference finals are like the Celtics and Lakers of the 80s or actually the, the Chicago Bulls, the dynastic Chicago Bulls with Michael Jordan never made it to, uh, I think, four is the most uh, consecutive conference finals that the team made because they lost in the second round in 94 and 95 and they made the conference finals in 89. But, um, so yeah, four straight years of at least reaching the conference finals is the best they ever did. But the, these Pistons uh, did better than that and got there six straight times. And, you know, so you take those Lakers and Celtics and maybe the Celtics and Lakers of the 60s. And that's really it as far as teams that having dynastic runs over, like longer than four or five years, I mean. Because I think, you know, we saw... The Heat have a four-year run a few years ago. The Cavs have just got done with a four-year run. But um, 
I think a six year run is a lot longer. Like it's a way bigger difference. Like the difference between four and six years is a lot bigger than the difference between say two and four years. Cause six is more than, more than half a decade at that point. You're getting close to being a, de- like you're on your way to being a decade long. Um, so let me get into it a little bit. In 2001 to 2002, the, Pistons had Ben Wallace and they had Jerry Stackhouse and Corliss Williamson and um, those were sort of their key cogs of their team at that point. There was no Tayshawn Prince, no Rip Hamilton, no Chauncey Billups yet. They did have um, Chucky Atkins on the team at that time and he was a decent starting point guard, not great, but really not a, not a super talented team at that point. Um, they did have, yeah, as I say, Chucky Atkins. Cliff Robinson, later on in his career, had, had been playing for them at this time. He was averaging 15 points a game, so that was pretty good. Um, but, yeah, really, those are the guys. Stackhouse, Robinson, Atkins, uh, Corliss Williamson, and then uh, Ben Wallace were the main players on their team. So a bit different than what you might typically think of for the Detroit Pistons at that time. But that team did get to the second round, and they lost to the Celtics. But they did have a 50-32 and 32 record, and they were second in the conference, which is really good, which I don't think people remember about this Pistons team, is that they were second in the entire conference, only behind the Nets. Uh, so that was impressive, in my opinion. Going forward to the 2002-2003 to 2003 season, this is when they first acquired... Um, Chauncey Billups in free agency. He was formerly on the Timberwolves, and then he finally found a home with the Pistons, which is, interestingly enough, people, a lot of people are mistaken and think that uh, the Pistons are like built, the team that drafted Chauncey Billups and that he played his prime there and then left for the Denver. But um, when he got to the Pistons, that was his fifth team in, uh, I think, five years because he was drafted in 97. So he was really an NBA journeyman by the time he was about 25 and on the Pistons. But he was really good for them. Um, They still had Chucky Atkins sort of as a six-man. Let's see here. So Billups, and then they had traded Jerry Stackhouse, who was their leading scorer the year prior, at about 22 points a game. They traded him to the Wizards for Richard Hamilton, who was a really young, promising player at the time. So Billups was giving him 16 points a game. Hamilton gave him 20 a game. Uh, Cliff Robinson was still the starting power forward, giving them 12 points a game. Uh, Ben Walsh, Defensive Player of the Year, giving them 15 rebounds and 3 blocks a game. They had Mehmet Okur off the bench, who went on to be an all-star like a year later. But he was averaging 7 points a game. And a rookie, Tayshaun Prince. So for the most most part, a similar team, except... They, they brought in Billups, and like Hamilton and Stackhouse were giving similar production, but they just flipped Stackhouse for Hamilton, but essentially the same production out of them. And yeah, so this year they also finished 50 and 32, and they were actually first in the entire Eastern Conference, which a lot of people don't remember. They got to the conference finals versus the Nets, but lost to them in a sweep. Uh, I think that they just really at this point were a little too inexperienced to get to the finals and uh, the Nets really knew what they were doing and so that for that reason they lost to the Nets. Going forward 2003-04 to they won 54 games this year. They had brought in Larry Brown to coach the team who was like a seasoned savvy coach and really knew what he was doing. Uh, the, the roster was pretty similar to the year before, except the main difference was that Cliff Robinson left the team and um, Rashid Wallace was traded for midseason and he was contributing 14 points a game, which is good. Tayshawn Prince came into his own a bit more. Uh, he averaged 10 points a game, but Billups and Hamilton were giving you the same amount of points relatively. Um, Billups at 17, Hamilton at 18. And Ben Wallace is still doing his thing, still a defensive player of the year, quality guy. And so, yeah, they, they basically had the same team. They had just matured a bit more, had, had playoff experience a bit more, and I think were ready more for the playoffs. Um, a bit more battle-tested, you might say. And I think Rashid Wallace coming to the team was a big deal because he could spread the floor and was an offensive threat. Um, 
And so they really went – they were already a super strong defensive team, but they did get a little more offensive firepower with him. And so they finished third in the conference that year, and they eventually – went on to get to the NBA Finals, and they defeated the Lakers in one of the biggest upsets in NBA Finals history, four games to one. That Lakers team featured Kobe Bryant, Shaq, uh, Carl Malone, and Gary Payton, so it was a big upset, like four Hall of Famers versus four uh, guys in, or five guys in Billups, Hamilton, Prince, uh, Wallace and Wallace that no one really thought could pull it off but they were an intense defensive team and they were able to do that and it's still considered a, a very big upset in NBA history and very impressive. Uh, the next year they had basically the same team again Larry Brown as the head coach they had uh, similar sort of guys all over the place they had let's see here Chauncey Bob starting point guard Hamilton starting shooting guard uh, Prince uh, the two Wallace boys. Uh, they actually did gain Antonio McDyess sort of as a six man, and they lost Car um, Corliss Williamson and Mehmet Okur, but really they kept the starting five, and they had some decent pieces off the bench, and McDyess and, uh, let's see here, Ronald Dupree was pretty decent for them. So they were still a solid team, repeated their record of 54-28, and and they got to the finals, and they got to game seven of the finals, but... They just, they just throughout the series had gotten a lot of unfortunate breaks and the Spurs had lot, gotten a lot of good breaks and uh, Robert Ori had hit a ton of clutch shots for De um, San Antonio which led to Detroit's demise. But a lot of people do think that Detroit could have easily won this series and been back-to-back -back champs. But just sometimes the, the way the ball bounces, um, you don't get the win. But, you know, they, they were equally talented, I'd say, with the Spurs that year and, like, uh, of any year, you could say that a loser lost. They deserve to win the title up there with any other team like that. Uh, in 2005-6, to six, Larry Brown stepped down after they had lost the finals, and they brought Flip Saunders in from the Minnesota Timberwolves. Uh, this was their best regular season of any season that the team had. They were 64-18 um, and 18 in the regular season. Very impressive. And they had, again, a pretty similar team coming back with them. They had um, Billups at starting point guard, Hamilton, Prince, um, Wallace, and Wallace with um, McDice off the bench along with Lindsey Hunter off the bench as their second other guy. A uh, really solid team, and the big difference with this one was that they beat the Miami Heat in the conference finals the previous year, but Shaq wasn't completely healthy that year. And then um, in this 06 conference finals, they played the Heat, but Shaq was like uh, completely healthy and really on his game and really was playing well. And so they topped the Pistons. So moving forward to the 06 07 year, still had Flip Saunders at head coach. They finished 53 and 29. Again, first in the entire Eastern Conference. Um, this is the year that the team started to change a bit. They lost uh, Ben Wallace in free agency. He really cashed in, and he went to play for the Bulls on a big contract. So they lost a big defensive presence, and um, they were like an okay defensive team, but not anywhere near what they were before. Before, they were like about the best defensive team around, and then now they were just like maybe a top 10 to top 15 defense. Uh, the starting lineup was looking uh, relatively similar. They still had... Phillips, Hamilton, Prince, and Rashid Wallace, and then um, at they were playing Rashid more at center, and then they had Chris, an older Chris Weber, playing power forward. He came back to his home of um, Michigan and got to play for the Pistons, which was always a lifetime dream for him. They also had Antonio McDyess still out as their sixth man off the bench, along with a lot of same guys like Lindsey Hunter. Um, let's see here. Yeah, so all those guys played decent. Chris Webber was still a decent contributor on the team, even though he was like in his last year, basically, in the league. Um, they played well. It's just that LeBron James really came into his own this year, and he really just dominated them in the playoffs, and Tayshaun Prince wasn't enough to stop him. And, so you know, they just really couldn't do anything about it, honestly. Uh, okay, so and the, this is the last of the six straight years that they got to the conference finals. 
2007 to 2008 season. They got 59 wins in the regular season. They were second in the conference behind the Celtics. Um, they met the Celtics in the conference finals, and that big three was just straight up more talented than the the Pistons at this point. They still tried out a similar starting lineup. You had Billups, Hamilton, Prince. Uh, you still had Rashid Wallace, and but then. Uh, at starting center, Antonio McDice finally went from being their sixth man to their starting center, averaging nine points and nine rebounds a game. Um, but still pretty similar guys off the bench. You still had Lindsey Hunter. And then at this time, Jason Max Siegel and Amir Johnson had been with the team for a few years, so they were still uh, with them. And, yeah, you know, they basically had the same team as the year before, except no Chris Webber uh, was the only difference. But this was actually their second highest win total of any season during this run, 59. So they played really well this year, but just um, the Celtics were just more talented with basically four guys who were all-stars compared to the, really at this point, Hamilton and Billups were the only all-star caliber players for Detroit. Uh, Prince and McDice and Rashid Wallace were just like good like starters, but not all-star level at all. And then when it really fell off was 2008 to 2009. Uh, this is at this point they had fired Flip Saunders because they just kept losing at the same spot and thought they needed a new voice. They only had 39 wins this season, but they did get into the playoffs as the eighth seed. Uh, they, what really fell apart for them was that they traded um, they traded Billups for Allen Iverson, who was, Allen Iverson was basically past his prime at this point, and the starting lineup was looking like Iverson at point. Hamilton, Prince, Rashid Wallace, and McDice uh, with coming off the bench a young Rodney Stuckey and uh, actually Kwame Brown was coming off the bench for them at this point. But really um, Rashid Wallace wasn't much of himself anymore and Hamilton was like the only solid good all-star level player. Um, Iverson made the all-star team but really wasn't that good anymore. He was getting around I think 16 points a game but um, he was inefficient. I'll look at his numbers here real quick for you. Uh, in this season, he was only shooting 41% from the field, and he was averaging 17 points a game. Still got elected to the All-Star game because people like Allen Iverson a lot, but really wasn't an All-Star caliber player. Um, but this was the last year of this Detroit team. Iverson left after this season. Uh, Rasheed Wallace left after this season. I think McDice left shortly afterwards. And then they were left with really just Richard Hamilton, Tayshawn Prince, and Rodney Stuckey as the core. And that's not good enough to be a playoff team because while Tayshawn Prince is a good starter, he's not anywhere near an all-star. And Rodney Stuckey is just a good, decent starter in his prime, but not an all-star. And really, they didn't have anything besides that. So that was the end of the era. And so the reason I want to talk about this video, guys, I've reiterated it at the beginning, but... Six straight conference finals and being able to keep a core intact for essentially seven years is very, very impressive. Um, obviously, they had big changes at the beginning when they brought in Billups and traded Stackhouse for um, for Richard Hamilton. But even the season before, they were still pretty decent at that point, um, with just Ben Wallace as the main focal point along with Stackhouse. But yeah, I just feel like they get forgotten, and don't ever forget that it's really hard to get to six straight conference finals. I know that with the Reese's, the recency bias of having LeBron get to eight straight finals, we don't really think about it, but um, that doesn't happen every day. And this, this Pistons team dominated the East for um, about eight, six seasons for sure, and was a contender for eight. So... Um, you know, I hope that you learned something that you didn't know before and that you can be more knowledgeable when talking about Detroit in the future. Uh, leave a comment if you have anything to say about this or if you found it interesting and want to talk about it somehow. I'd be happy to talk about it a bit. And I hope you guys have a good day. Bye.